It's for sure been a crazy, awesome week for crypto. Bullish gains across the board. A lot of people calling for the bull market. In this video, I'm going to break down on the macro why I disagree with that. I'm going to show you where I think the bull market will start. Truly, that parabolic bull market. I'm going to show it to you. I'm also going to dig into this Bitcoin chart because there's a very, very big thing happening on the Bitcoin chart right here. Look at this. Look at these daily candles at these trend lines. I want to break that down for you. I want to break down the target to the upside. If Bitcoin bulls do step back in, what does that look like? And if they don't, what does downside look like? So hit the subscribe, hit the like. Let's just jump into the video. I actually want to start with this tweet real quick that I, I did like a few days ago. I said, this pump is nothing. And this is while the, while the pump was going. It's also not the bull market. And I want to explain why that is. And I tweeted yesterday. I said, in one year from now, the parabolic part of the crypto bull market will begin. Sounds like a lot of time, but let me just explain my thoughts. Then we're going to dig into the, to the Bitcoin charts. And please note, this chart, this video, it's just a roadmap for the entire crypto space. Even if you don't hold Bitcoin, what I discuss here is important to all altcoins. So let's do this. This is the zoomed out Bitcoin chart. A lot going on there, but just a couple really key things we need to just take note of. This is where we are this cycle around leading into this white line, the next Bitcoin halving 2024. If you look at historical halvings, we're, we're kind of in these red boxes right around here. You go back to the cycle before that, all the way back here in 2016, we're in this red box right there pre-halving. What I want to make a note of is the green boxes that you see here. It's bull market high to bear market low. Those green boxes, as I call them, if you watch my content, you know, the bull market doors being broken. Notice all the way back here, 2016, those bull market doors being broken in 2017, even tested a couple of times. You can see pre-having that area was tested. Bitcoin comes back down and then breaks the bull market doors. You go to the next cycle, you see a very similar thing playing out. Bitcoin tests the bull market doors, comes all the way back down, finally breaks the bull market doors post-having. Right now, we're not even close to those bull market doors. We haven't even tested those bull market doors. Could we? Yes, we could. And if we do, we will wait to see if they're broken. We will wait to see if there is resistance and we come all the way back down, right? There's a lot that can happen in this time, time period before the next Bitcoin halving. But I maintain my view and my opinion that these bull market doors, they won't be broken until after the Bitcoin halving just like we've seen in previous cycles. So it all really does start on the shorter term on these charts and what happens with these patterns and these setups, especially this is a huge setup on Bitcoin charts from a pattern perspective. But what happens next in terms of these cycles and bull market doors being broken, it's a step-by-step -step thing. So we have to evaluate, well, what, what do bullish targets to the upside look like? What do they look like to the downside, bearish targets to the downside? Because this could be the setup for leading into the next halving and the explosion into the bull market doors. So I'm going to continue tracking these things while maintaining my view in anticipation that I could be wrong, obviously, but I'm going to be it, going to continue tracking these things uh, with that macro mindset, with that macro picture at the forefront of my mind. Now let's talk about Bitcoin. I think what happens here could be very decisive for the short to midterm, obviously. Meaning this, let's look at the target to the upside first. And it's, it's actually a very clear looking target for me. Right now, we have this insane resistance at this rising wedge, lower trend line, that dot, dotted line. You all know we've been tracking this rising wedge for a very long time. Bitcoin broke to the downside, consolidated. As always with these patterns, we, we anticipate the pullback. Check out the pullback, everybody. Check out the, the exact resistance. At those trend lines. That's not a coincidence. And it's not because I'm amazing doing what I do. It's just a, a technical analysis rule that seems to play out so often. And the consistency of this, it boggles my mind. And I've been doing these videos for almost six years now. Boggles my mind. Also boggles my mind how people say technical analysis doesn't work when we get these moves happening so often. Look at the resistance on the daily chart. Speaking of the resistance, does that mean Bitcoin can't go higher? No. And a good, and it's first off, their trend lines are a good area to wait for bullish confirmation, meaning do the bulls actually step in and break those trend lines at this point? Consolidation makes sense. Doesn't immediately mean we're coming down. 
if we look at the momentum of Bitcoin, you'll notice it's it's overbought, right? Clean this chart up a little bit. Bitcoin's overbought right now. Does that mean Bitcoin needs to come back down on the price chart? Not necessarily. Check out Bitcoin becoming overbought all the way back here in the beginning of the year, January 2023. Overbought right here. What's it do? It consolidates very similar to what it's doing now, above all the moving averages, and then goes higher. Check that out. A little bit of consolidation, and then goes higher before really dipping. And all along that journey of higher highs, Bitcoin's putting in lower highs on the RSI. We might have a very similar environment. Bitcoin starts consolidating on the RSI, as you see there, speculatively, while going higher. The question I have in going higher is this. What happens at this yellow trend line? Because this yellow trend line, I, I've, been, I've had it there, haven't talked about it a lot, but it is kind of this larger upper trend line area of resistance. This could be the higher high area, that $37,000 $37, region for Bitcoin before seeing real resistance and then coming all the way back down. What does all the way back down look like? Two, two scenarios. Number one, from where it is right now, Bitcoin escaping these moving averages in this recent pump that we've seen, it's a swing, swing low to swing high. This Fibonacci area right below $30,000 is a key support area. If Bitcoin right now is to see resistance at these trend lines, come back down, I'll be watching to see what happens at the $30,000 to around $28,500 area of support. That could be a higher low support area of consolidation that we see Bitcoin in. That's the first area of support. If Bitcoin goes higher before coming back down, it's very simple. We take the same exact swing low and we just bring it higher to wherever that next resistance might be. And you can see the Fibonacci moves up a little bit, even more confluent with that mental barrier uh, that we've had at $30,000, more confluent there. So now we're looking around 30500 support to around just below $29,000, right? So the support moves up a little bit. And at that moment, if we're getting that, that pull to the downside, what's happening? Remember, we have a lot of time still. Time is running out. The halving is coming quickly. But we still have all this time on this weekly chart for consolidation, right? So Bitcoin could just truly come down and it could put in a higher low on the macro. It could come down to the lower 20,000s. What does that look like on the daily chart? It means support's failing. The support that we're talking about, if it happens, it's failing and Bitcoin's breaking down to finally achieve the target out of the rising wedge, the lower 20,000s. Remember, breaks the downside. The pullback is happening right now. But what happens in this upper region of resistance, if it fails, if the Bitcoin bulls fail and they don't get this monster breakout, what's in play is the continuation to the target. And we have time for that to play out in the coming months if we look at the macro. I don't want that to happen. I want bullish breakout. I want Bitcoin just to fly to the Fibonacci on the macro, test the bull market doors right now. Let's go test $50,000. I want that to happen. But let's be realistic. In, in the technical analysis of it all, these things play out so often. Bitcoin respects the charts. Bitcoin price respects patterns. We've seen it time and time again over the years. And all this does is not to prepare. It's not to predict. It is solely to prepare. It's solely to anticipate all these scenarios so that when we visualize, man, we could be touching the lower 20,000s early next year before finally going up and working our way into the bull market. Are you serious? It's just being prepared from a portfolio perspective, a mental perspective, drowning out the noise. But in the meantime, let's evaluate. Well, what happens if Bitcoin breaks out? What happens at the key resistance, higher high areas? Do we get a bullish confirmation anticipating the upside as well? Is our portfolio prepared for that? And that's why I do these videos. This is solely how I see things, how I see the charts, how I see crypto right now. I'm just sharing the data with you. So this is what I'm watching on Bitcoin and generally in crypto as a whole. And I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below, how you're doing out there, what you think in terms of these bull cycles. I think we're getting there. I really do. But we still have a little time, times to go, time to go. Consolidation is okay. It makes sense. It's what happens every cycle. So let's monitor it. Let's see what happens. Hit the like. Your support means a lot to me. I really mean that. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Turn those notifications on and I'll see you in the next video. God bless.